Hey, remember all the people that kept trying to pour water on my gunpowder? And I kept telling them, I tried to throw you, but you know, listen, not, not, not. And I kept pushing them away from uh, pouring water on my gunpowder. Well, now you're going to see why. It, it, don't look, don't bite at the first thing that falls in the water. That shiny thing that fall in the water and you bite it is normally a hook. And somebody's on the other side with a rod and reel. You've just now became lunch. Hey, folks, how y'all doing? Uh, y'all see the title here. And we're just going to go on now. This is the same story with from three different outlets. But the reason I'm using three different outlets, because each outlet, the base is the same, but some of the ancillary story from the fringes, from the fringe. And I don't mean the fringe in a bad way. Uh, they got more info like this one talks about this and that. Over the base story. This one talks about that. Over the base story. This one talks about that. Over the base story. So that's why um, that's why I'm uh, uh, doing it like this here. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know how the copyright game is played. Y'all know I I ain't even I shouldn't even have to tell y'all at this point. Let's go ahead and get going. And we're starting out with Fox. 26. Come on, Fox, batter up. You're next. Duvalde's mayor is saying Robb Elementary will be demolished. This is all coming as the Texas Department of Public Safety calls the law enforcement response to the massacre an abject failure. Fox's Rudy Kosky today with the chilling new details we learned from Austin. This image, first published by the Texas Tribune, shows law enforcement Oh, this is from the 21st, two days ago. Officers in Uvalde, armed, ready, but waiting. It brought about a harsh assessment Tuesday from DPS Director Steve McCraw. There's compelling evidence that the law enforcement response to the attack at Robb Elementary was an abject failure and antithetical to everything we've learned over the last two decades since the Columbine massacre. McCraw was the main witness before a special state Senate committee reviewing the attack at Robb Elementary School. The committee was shown a timeline built from a school security camera, police body cameras, and recorded calls to a dispatcher from Uvalde ISD Police Chief Pete Arredondo. We don't have enough firepower. Right now it's all pistols and he has an AR-15. The information McCraw presented contradicted earlier statements issued by the chief, who was considered to be the incident commander. Now... I wouldn't expect every police officer to have some of the training that some of us has had. Do I prefer a rifle or a shotgun, a semi-automatic high capacity shotgun in CQB? Yes. But when I'm no, I'm not going to be making having to make 75, 80, 90 yard shot you know what i'm saying uh 70 80 90 foot uh, or whatever shots uh across wide open spaces and all i got is a pistol and they got a rifle i don't feel shorthanded at all inside rooms like a school setting i don't feel short with my with with my perceived <laughs> training in pistol skills and the firearm and my uh, sighting system and you know uh, I, I wouldn't feel shorthanded at all I'd be saying one two Freddy's coming for you three four better lock the door I want him to hit oh, that's crazy no it's not it strikes fear in the hearts of most people at the time then he waited for shields then he waited for SWAT Lastly, he waited for a key that was never needed. 19 children and two teachers were killed while authorities waited for an order to confront the gunman who got into the school through an unlocked outside door. 
The committee was told the door to the classroom that the gunman entered also was unlocked. McCraw testified the strike plate on the door frame was faulty. A review of security video, according to McCraw, indicates another critical discrepancy from what the chief said in a media report. We could never see anybody put their hand on the door, and of course, up until, up until the breach. It was confirmed tools to break through the doors were on site, but not immediately used. McCraw suggested every state trooper, as well as all local patrol officers in Texas, should have protective shields and breaching tools with them. But in an active shooter situation, McCraw testified there's no reason to wait for equipment or for backup. If you got one officer, that's enough. Another leadership problem was revealed during the hearing. I actually agree with that. But for myself, now, what I agree for, what but for what I feel I'm capable of and that I know I got the gravel to do, I can't expect everybody else to have that. But in my opinion, for me, one is enough. I, I look, man. I'm gonna cut fence and sort sort these bastards out. Uvalde ISD school administrators, according to McCraw, were notified about the broken classroom door before the attack, but it was not repaired. The design of the door was even questioned. It doesn't lock from the inside and apparently is used by other school districts. What we have is a situation that is. Um, uh, the school gets an alert and goes into lockdown, but there really is no lockdown at all. I actually met him before. I met Paul um, very briefly, thing at the state capitol anyway. I, 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 you know, and he, he came in, he shook all our hands. I actually met him. Effectively, no. And that was Fox's Rudy Koski reporting. Now, during a Uvalde City Council meeting that happened tonight, the police chief, Arundondo, who was recently elected to a council position, was denied a leave of absence. That decision was met by a round of applause. I heard that before it was released on the news because y'all know I, I heard about it before it got released on the news. Next story, y'all. We are learning some stunning new information that tonight has parents of those 19 children who were killed in Uvalde, Texas, wondering, could their child have been saved? That's because the head of the Texas Department of Public Safety blasted the police response, detailing how there were enough armed officers in the school hallway three minutes after the attack began. But instead, officers waited 74 minutes before breaching what we learned today was an unlocked door. Texas's top cop, Stephen McCraw, top cop, testified today in Austin that officers had the manpower, they had the equipment and the time to, quote, neutralize the suspect. McCraw Remember when I told you guys uh, that the chief stopped cooperating with the investigation? I told y'all that a week ago, a week and a half ago. I remember telling y'all that if you listened to if you listened that far into my thing, didn't now if you just watched the first 30 seconds and clicked off and made a come, that's cool, but you would have missed it. But yeah, I um I I put that out there that he and that's why I'm saying hold your horses, keep your powder dry. Cause for him to do that, there has to be a reason. And here we are. Craw placed the blame squarely on police chief Pete Arandondo, who was inside the school but did not act. CBS's Omar Villafranca is going to start us off tonight from Uvalde, Texas. Good evening, Omar. Good evening. The head of DPS said the fact that officers waited so long to react goes against everything they are taught. And he said that in action set the profession back a decade. He also said the school police chief put the lives of officers over children. Texas's top trooper was blunt. There's compelling evidence that the law enforcement response to the attack at Robb Elementary was an abject failure. And Colonel Steve McCraw, head of the Texas Department of Public Safety, placed that blame. Oh, and in full disclosure, I actually met him too. 
<laughs> I met him some years ago. It's been it's been a few years. I don't think either. I don't know if he had the top spot yet or he was second. But anyway, I, I've actually met him too. Y'all know I'm a DPS contractor. I've been a DPS contractor since 2005. Does. Solely at the boots of the Uvalde School Police Chief, Pete Arredondo. The only thing stopping a hallway of dedicated officers from entering room 111 and 112 was the on-scene commander who decided to place the lives of officers before the lives of children. McCraw laid out multiple times police failed to engage sooner. Three minutes into the attack, armed officers, two with rifles, were present, including Arredondo. And at 11.52 a.m., 21 minutes in, the first ballistic shield was inside the school, confirming security footage obtained by the Austin American statesman. By 12.21, officers with four ballistic shields heard more gunshots. Yet, police waited, even as 911 calls were coming from at least two students inside the classrooms. The officers had weapons, the children had none. The officers had body armor, the children had none. What anything to say to the parents? Arredondo, who was also in Austin at a closed door hearing, tried to dodge cameras and tough questions. Arredondo has claimed that officers were looking for keys to open the classroom door. But McCraw stunned lawmakers when he said the door didn't lock from the inside and no one tried to open them. I don't believe, based on the information we have right now, that that door was ever secured. In fact, I have great reason to believe it wasn't secured. How about trying the door and see if it's unlocked? As more information comes to light, Uvalde's grief has turned to anger. At last night's school board it's meeting, hard. Angel Garza, whose 10-year-old stepdaughter, A. Marie, was killed, called for Arredondo to resign. How are we supposed to continue our lives here knowing that those people that are supposed to protect us let down our family? Arredondo previously told the media uh, that officers didn't have enough firepower to stop the shooter, but McGraw's testimony contradicts that. He says they did. It's worth noting that Arredondo. They did, in my opinion. I mean, I got my side, I got my standard sidearm, and I got an M4. Oh, man, I'm coming for you, pork chop. So is also a city council member, and there is a city council meeting tonight, and one of the things they plan to discuss, a leave of absence shooter but McGraw's testimony contradicts that he says they did it's worth noting that Arredondo is also a city council member and there is a city council meeting tonight and one of the things they plan to discuss a leave of absence for Arredondo Nora so many new details Omar Villafranca thank you his leave of absence was denied I don't know if y'all got that in the press but I got that hours ago his leave of the Scottsboro Boys, Emory University. Huh, that rings a bell. I may go back and look at that. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, last one, folks. Like, hey, brother, eight win. See, I remember when he was eight win timeless before it was Big Pontiac. YouTube hacked this channel. They hacked this channel before they hacked mine. But anyway, last story, y'all. An eye-opening hearing today at the state Senate in Texas, where lawmakers heard shocking new details about the police response to the Uvalde school shooting. The public safety head calling the response an abject failure. Here's Gabe Gutierrez. These still images from surveillance video reviewed by the Austin American statesman in the Texas Tribune, but not by NBC News, show multiple officers armed with rifles and ballistic shields inside Robb Elementary as the massacre unfolded. A law enforcement response to the attack at Robb Elementary was an abject failure and antithetical to everything we've learned over the last two decades since the Columbine massacre. Today, the head of the Texas Department of Public Safety, Stephen McGraw, said just subject. three minutes after the gunman entered the school, there were enough armed officers there to stop him. Instead, he says they waited for an hour and 14 minutes. The on scene commander waited for radio and rifles. Then he waited for shields. Then he waited for SWAT. Lastly, he waited for a key that was never needed. 
McCraw says he believes the doors to the classrooms where 19 students and two teachers were killed were unlocked. Today, he provided the most detailed timeline of the carnage so far, based on surveillance footage, body camera video, and 911 calls. At 11.28 a.m., the shooter crashed his vehicle into a ditch. A minute later, a teacher called 911, reporting a man with a gun. At 11.31, a patrol car sped into the school parking lot, but drove by the shooter. At 11.33, he went inside and started shooting into classrooms. Within three minutes, three Uvalde police officers with two rifles entered the building. Seconds later, so did two school district officers, including Chief Pete Arredondo. He called a police landline from his cell phone saying, we don't have enough firepower. We all have pistols. Well, that subject. was directly contradicted today. The only thing stopping a hallway of dedicated officers from in room 111 and 112 was the on-scene commander who decided to place the lives of officers before the lives of children. The officers had weapons, the children had none. Over the next 30 minutes, 911 calls from students inside the classroom begin. More ballistic shields arrive. Chief Arredondo requests the master key and the gunman fires more rounds. He's done, he's done. Chief Arredondo then says, we've lost two kids. These walls are thin. If he starts shooting, we're going to lose more kids. I hate to say, we have to put those to the side right now. Minutes later, people are going to ask why we're taking so long. We're trying to preserve the rest of the life. The torrent of illogical statements here and it is preposterous. More than an hour after the gunman entered, Chief Arredondo says we're having a blank problem getting into the room because it is locked. He's got an AR-15 and he's shooting everywhere like crazy. Not until 12.50 does a Border Patrol tactical team breach the classroom and kill the gunman. As Chief Arredondo ignored questions from reporters today in Uvalde, anger. He needs to be held accountable. He needs to answer questions publicly and provide information for us. Gave a lot, a lot of new information here. Chief Arredondo, we saw not taking reporters' questions, but is he saying anything tonight? Not publicly, Lester. We're told that he testified in front of a Texas House committee for more than five hours today, but behind closed doors. You'll remember that earlier this month, he said that he did not think he was the scene's incident commander, Lester. No. The, if the Border Patrol TAC team came from the Border Patrol office, that's going further if you uh, leave Uvalde and go west towards Brackettville. There um, uh, is before you get to Del Rio. Um, there's a it's on the uh, right hand side as you're going west. The uh, Border Patrol office is there's and so but in a four wheeler with unfettered access and that part over there, it's only one lane in each direction. But when you have blue and blue and red lights and and you ain't got to worry about getting pulled over for speed and you should be able, I, I would think they would be able to make it in 40 minutes or less. But I'm speculating because, of course, I don't know, uh, you know, I'm talking like somebody was just sitting behind the wheel, just waiting on the horn blow. When you hit a horn blow, you'd be ready to go. There's the news right there, like I say, and his his uh, leave was denied. His leave was denied. Uh, leave your comments below, folks. Y'all be good and be safe. Bye.